So with that, we're going to start um, because we have quite a few of you. And, and one, I think this, this board is pleased to have all of you that, that are running come to the board to talk about your vision for Spring Valley Lake. Um, many of us have been up here for, for many years and understand what public service is, and you're doing the same thing in, in your role. Um, the list that I've been given here is in the order I think that you came to the meeting. So the first person will be Todd, and you get three, you get three minutes. <laughs> the board can't comment on anything that you say. At the end, we're going to take a vote. That vote's going to be, the, be uh, carried through with, with Michelle, our executive assistant. Then that list will be given to uh, our clerk, uh, Trustee Wood, and then there'll be a, a, a board action. So we're going to try to move this along as quick as possible. One of our senior employees tonight has to leave for a conference out of state, so we don't want to belabor this, but we do want to thank you for coming here. I will also say this publicly. Your general manager uh, uh, spoke to our board for about 10 minutes in February to talk about the great relationship that they want to see from the association of the college, and we now have a college employee, Frank Castanos, who lives in Spring Valley, that is a part of that, and I'll read a little comment at the end of this. So. Our first speaker will be Todd Espinola. Todd, did I get it right? Espinola. Yeah. yeah. So Todd is speaking in behalf of Kevin Fugate. Uh, Kevin called me. Uh, Kevin was not going to run the board. Uh, he just retired after 30 years of being a firefighter. Him and his wife on a long overdue uh, trip, and he asked if I if he could have somebody speak, and we made a very quick executive decision. Said yes. So. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I am here on behalf of Kevin Fugate, who is my friend and my brother-in-law. So I wanted to speak a little bit for him. Uh, again, my name is Todd Espindola. I've been law enforcement 32 years. I'm currently the chief of police at Snowline Joint Unified School District. So I want to say a couple words about Kevin. Uh, Kevin has spent 32 years in the fire service. He actually attended Victor Valley College, earning a fire uh, science emergency medicine degree. He completed the basic fire academy and paramedic program at Victor Valley College. He has worked in the field as a certified paramedic for 32 years, 30 of that in the fire service. He started with the Sperry Fire Department as a firefighter paramedic, and then moved to the City of Ontario Fire Department where he retired as a fire captain after 30 years of service. Kevin has dedicated his life to public service for over 30 years and looks forward to continued service in his retirement. Kevin now has nearly 20 years of experience in union leadership and spe uh, specializes in contract negotiations, politics, and labor management relations. He, has, uh, he was elected to the Ontario Fire Association Executive Board, where he served as the Chief Steward, the Vice President, and most recently for the last nine years as their President prior to retirement. He has a strong background in local and state politics and has served on numerous committees and elected board during his career, serving firefighters and other labor groups. Kevin has negotiated no, numerous multi-million dollar contracts. He currently serves as the International Association of Firefighters California State Representative and as a labor relations consultant and negotiator for the Ferrone Law Group. Kevin has lived in the high desert most of his life. He moved to Asperia when he was seven and attended all the local schools, raised his children here in the high desert as well. Kevin has been married for 31 years to his wife, Shannon, who also grew up locally. They have raised three children and welcomed their first grandchild 18 months ago. The family moved into Spring Valley Lake 13 years ago, and his two daughters have bought or built homes in this community. Kevin and Shannon have deep roots and a large extended family to include me, my wife and I, uh, that, uh, with over 16 members living here in Spring Valley Lake. Kevin hopes to serve the Spring Valley Lake Association members and dedicate his time to improving an already thriving community, but the work to improve our communities now and for the future is never done. Kevin, I'd like to ask for the support of the Spring Valley Lake Association, for your support for the Spring Valley Lake Association Board. If elected, he'll dedicate his expertise and experience to improving the community and work diligently to improve communication and the relationship between Victor Valley College and the Association. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Joanne Romero. <clears throat> Good evening, trustees. Welcome back as a former board member. 
Welcome back. Yeah, somebody asked me why in the world do I want to do this again. Um, I uh, uh, ran for board in 2019, and I've been on the board for four years. I, I termed out in 2023, and now I'm back. Um, I enjoy the volunteer work, as, as everybody that volunteers know. It's very rewarding. I love working with people, the staff, and the community. And I feel that I can offer uh, experience and um, enthusiasm to the board. Uh, I was a teacher for uh, 34 years in public schools, Fullerton, um, uh, Hesperia, and Rialto. And, uh, and I was also an administrator in Hesperia for 16 years. I retired and I have been volunteering ever since. Um, my priorities for the board are to take care of the lake, of course. We are named Spring Valley Lake, so we have to take care of that. Um, community safety is very big on everybody's list. When you, when you talk to people, they are constantly you know, concerned about safety. And my third uh, overall goal is to protect property values. And there's many ways to protect property values. That's, that goes really deep. Um, but my primary objective, if elected, is to ensure that communication and fiscal responsibility remain high on the list in every decision. Uh, VVC, being our neighbor, is a great resource to the Victor Valley. When I came up here when I was 16 years old, following my parents up here when some guy knocked on the door and said, there's some really neat property up in Victorville you need to look at. And so I tagged along with my parents and I came to this building and saw that there was a college here that was more beautiful than the college I was gonna go to. And I thought, man, that's, that's a really neat area. And lo and behold, I ended up uh, building a house in 1983 and raising my kids here, and I've loved it. My roots are very deep. A um, couple weeks ago, I had an, I'll call it an opportunity. I don't know if that's the real word, but I was at Victor Valley, or at uh, Desert Valley Hospital. Um, and I ran into a crew of nurses from Victor, from Victor Valley uh, Junior College, from this college, and um, they were so wonderful. And I got talking to one of them, uh, and she was so enthusiastic. And I said, why do you want to do this? What, what is your motivation? And she said, well, I love being out here among the public because it's so much better than, um, it's so much better than working on a mannequin. And so, <laughs> I mean, you have to start somewhere. You have to start on a mannequin. But let me just finish one little thought that we, Spring Valley Lake has the, has the ability to work with this college and bring students to Spring Valley Lake to possibly do some internships. And I did see Mr. Logan's uh, presentation to you folks. And uh, I think we're all very much in favor of getting some uh, real close relationships going for the kids that, yes, they're starting to work on mannequins, but, and I'm not just talking about the nursing program. They're, they want to work with real people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne. Tim Craig. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for having us today. Um, my name is Tim Craig. You may remember me from last year. I'm the only re repeating uh, visitor from last year. Uh, last, last year I ran against a incumbent slate of three gentlemen, came up 10 votes short for making it into office, so I decided I'd give it one more try. Um, this year, when making that decision, I looked for a slate of people that could run with me that had similar vision for Spring Valley Lake which is not always easy because there's a lot of difference of opinion on, we all want to get to the same place, but there's a lot of difference in opinion on how we're going to get there. Uh, I'm happy to say that I succeeded uh, far beyond my wildest expectations of 
uh, the people I'm running with, all of whom you'll hear from today. Um, we want to accomplish our goals through a, a diverse set of skill sets that we believe we have, and also different viewpoints that I think will complement each other and allow us to, to do well if, uh, if elected to the board. Uh, we've also chose to all speak on different topics, so we won't be repeating ourselves today. The topic that I'm uh, going to speak on is uh, reform of our, our uh, uh, finances and um, for the association. Um, and we're not proposing really anything revolutionary, but just a uh, return to fiscal prudence and a prioritization of the community's resources and needs. Recently, in, in my opinion, our community, and that includes uh, all of you, has been uh, treated as a cash spigot for the events that are happening there. You know that a budget is, is constructed, and from that budget, they determine what the assessments will be, and that's what each lot owner is charged. And I'm, I know you're aware of that because you have quite a few lots that fall into that category. Um, but it's a precious and finite uh, resource, cash, to do this is, and and I'm afraid that it has not been always treated that way. We've had a number of major projects that we've undertaken that were poorly planned and poorly executed and ended up costing much more than they should have without giving us the desired results for what we wanted to see. And that's not good for anybody. I, you know, Spending money on something that ends up being great and worthwhile is wonderful, but if we're overspending and we're not getting those results, it, uh, it feels like a lot of wasted money and resource. Our budget process is also uh, somewhat broken, um, and we're looking to repair that as well. And we have some specific initiatives we're going to be putting into place immediately when we get on the board, if elected, to make those things happen. Because there's a lot of uh, experience on our, with our set of how we might do that and not just continue what's been happening in the past. Anyways, thank you for having us today. and. Uh, You'll be able to tell the other candidates that I'm running with by a small fashion accessory you might notice that you'll, we're all wearing. Thanks again. Say your name again. Pardon? Say your name again. Name again. Oh, uh, Tim Craig. Tim Craig. Okay, I want to make sure I have that right. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> Dennis Reagan. A man who needs very little introduction. Yeah, well, if I can stumble my way up here. Oh, you're good there. Good evening, trustees. <laughs> Thank you for having us. I know this is a once a year boring situation for you guys. Uh, my name is Dennis Verhagen. I lived in the community for 18 years. My wife and I moved in here in 2006, had a house built. Uh, we've been on the planning committee, the finance committee, the budget committee, depending on which year you had it, depends on what they wanted to call it, the communications committee. I've also, we also formed the Coffee Break Club we also established the first and largest Facebook group for SVL, the SVL Citizens Group. Currently, we have over 6,000 members. Uh, we de designed the group to foster communication, share interests, and common concerns within the group. I'm also a member of the Spring Valley Lake Municipal Advisory Council. We report to the county and Supervisor Cook. Uh, we provide an interface for Spring Valley Lake on county matters, Example related to CSA 64, road repair conditions, maintenance, and of course the archway outside we're still working on. And for anybody that's interested, those speed humps, that's our fault. Wow. <laughs> so, for those of you been in the community know what I'm talking about. My particular focus on the board would be to improve our consistency in our policies and projects to assist in, the re in doing a review of our CCNRs, bylaws, and rules and regulations and bring them up to date. That means being realistic about our capabilities with an emphasis on protecting our assets and ensuring the beauty of our lake, parks, and equestrian area and keeping it the envy of the desert. And one little side note, yes, I want to keep the college involved. A few years back, when we had a different general manager, Mr. Brady got me in contact with the English department and I was able to talk to them, and we were able to arrange to have two summer interns from your, I would assume, English Department of Journalism for the summer, and they wrote up articles for the 
Breeze magazine or newspaper, whatever you'd like to call it. So that's one of those things that, yeah, I know that there's opportunity there. We just have to dig it up. Thank you very much, and I hope you vote for us. Thank you. Steve Troop. Uh, board. Uh, I've lived in Spring Valley for over 30 years, 40 years, since the early 90s. I'm real concerned about the lake, and I was on the lake committee for almost seven years. Uh, I have a lot of expertise towards the lake. I'm very, very concerned, and I think anybody in Spring Valley should be. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, I just want to represent Spring Valley. Thank you. Steve, you can make a great politician. Short, short speeches are the best. <laughs> Sherry Boyd. And Sherry, you are on the board. I am. And you yeah, served it, for a long time. Uh, I have, job. and that's why I'm here. I, um, my name is Sherry Boyd, and I am currently terming off of the, the Spring Valley Lake Association board, and I just wanted to thank you all um, for your support during these past four-plus years. Um, I also wanted to um, encourage your support for Joanne Romero. We were able to serve together for a little bit over three years on, on the board throughout my term and her past term. And I just want you to know that you cannot get a better candidate to represent Spring Valley Lake. She has such concern and care for our community. Um, plus, as she mentioned, her deep roots in the community. And uh, I just wanted to encourage your support of her for your voting. Um, and again, thank you. And I'm so glad that I am not up here um, asking for votes for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so nice thank you. On. Yeah, but you can take a year off and go back in. Yes. <laughs> CJ Eversall. Evening board. My name is CJ Eversall. And <clears throat> a little bit of backstory. Uh, pretty much born and raised in this desert, grew up here in Spring Valley Lake, uh, 1983. My mom uh, married my stepfather, grew up in Caspian, uh, grew up on the lake, grew up at the golf course. Uh, they decided to part ways in 23 or 1993. Uh, didn't didn't stop there. I continued to go. I went to Serrano High School. Uh, continued my golf uh, career. Uh, that's hopefully going to flourish here soon. Um, and uh, played high school golf with them. Still on Spring Valley uh, Golf Course. Continued uh, my education here at BBC. Played for the golf team. Uh, and uh, graduated from the Public Safety Academy. Uh, Continued on from the Public Safety Academy, went on and uh, became uh, law enforcement in 2004. Uh, and 2019, had the chance to uh, uh, buy Pizza Factory in Alp Valley. And uh, in 2019, my family and I uh, purchased it. Uh, continued to work in law enforcement uh, from 2019 to 2020. After four surgeries, finally said, you know what, I'm a little broken. And uh, uh, took my focus towards Pizza Factory. And as you guys know, uh, I work very hard in this community, uh, in Spring Valley Lake, not only with Spring Valley Lake, it, with all of our community. And uh, Out uh, Valley Pizza Factory has raised just over 70000 for our local youth since I have been there. And we work well with a lot of uh, organizations through BBC also to raise money uh, for them or um, to, to feed a lot of their projects that, that they, they, they have. <clears throat> um, my, my passion is the golf course. My passion is, is the lake. I'm an avid boater there. Uh, I know there's a lot of work to be done at the lake. Um, public safety, with my knowledge over the last 20 years in it, uh, as back up one step, I still am a reserve for Snowline School Police. That is my last stint that I did, uh, chief. 
was just here speaking. And uh, sorry, I'm not a great public speaker sometimes that my mind gets going. But uh, I think what our public safety, with my knowledge, can, can really help out, especially with the new road being open. There's a lot of influx of, of transits that are coming into our community, a lot of influx of people that are driving through this community. Uh, so where can we help? Where, where, where can our public safety go with that? And I think that's what I really want to dive into with them. You know, I'm a small chess piece in, in, out of seven people, and I think that I can really help them out in, in a lot of areas. So thanks. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, and I hear you are a great golfer. Vicki Fitch. Good evening, trustees. Thank you so much for having us here today. You probably all got this packet that... I think um, she's just... Oh. Oh, okay. Whoops. <laughs> protocols that they wait because otherwise they'll get buried somewhere. Oh, well, it was for all four of us, but there we go. You'll at least that'll give you a little additional information for that. You'll see on that one sheet on the top that there's uh, five major things that we're running on as a, a unit, the four of us, and we use the term caring for the valley, which is Craig Fitch, Troop Verhagen, to help people make that decision. Um, we are, we, we are, we did a survey of the community, finding out what the community wants. And as residents there, and I'm actually a student here at Victor Valley College as well, which I completely enjoy. So that's been fun. I do woodworking and taking Photoshop. And I see a great opportunity for us to bridge Spring Valley Lake. I mean, you are the bridge between you know, the equestrian side and the lake side. And bringing unity to our community is something that's really needed there. And this, this this particular school happens to be an amenity, according to me. You know, that's that's part of what we have. We've got the lake, we've got school, we've got golf, we have so many things, and there's a great opportunity for us to intermix those things together to help continue to build our community. Um, we've got, you know, there's a, there's other issues, and I would like to, I guess, appeal to your sense of um, finance. That right now the lake infrastructure problem, and I, I'm sure you guys have gotten all the reports, but it's going to cost us anywhere from $10 million to $100 million to fix. We, that's going to come, that, you guys have a lot of votes there, that's a lot of money coming out of your pocket. We actually have, we have put together uh, facts, figures, and information to try and limit as much money as we can using the existing things. As a matter of fact, at a previous board meeting, when when items come up for, you know, that are on the um, the reserve report, we're looking for alternative ways. When they needed new furniture, there was fifteen thousand dollar expenditure. I said I can get free furniture for you guys if we just go send a truck and pick it up. They. Just, they did not choose that option. I'm not sure why, but those are the kind of things, even small things will help us to mitigate some of the additional expenses that are gonna be going out. And that's one of the things that we need. We need a good fiscally responsible board. And like I said, we we aren't waiting until we get in there to dig in. We've been digging into the financials. Tim is, is an expert at that. And I know Steve didn't say much about himself, but he is a, a Vietnam veteran. He worked for the, I believe it was the government. And you can see on his one sheet, had a, you know over 250 employees employees that, that reported to him, we have a lot of skill set here, and we want to put that in, we want to engage that so we can help our community and we can build Spring Valley Lake back. We need the, the lake of the health, the health of the lake. We need to restore that. It's, you know, it's, people are concerned, and maybe some of the things they might not need to be concerned, but with the assets that we have and the people that you have here, I can see a lot of ways that we can coordinate things and, and you know, with our, within our community to create advantage for all sides. So I hope that you will think about that, Caring for the Valley, Craig Fitch, Troop Verhagen. Um, like I said, we put those one sheets together for you guys, and we really appreciate your time this evening, and we look forward to serving you. Thank you. So Michelle, remind me, okay, so with the help of Dr. Walden and the trustees and Michelle, our super right-hand person, uh, so we've, we've taken all the testimony. Now the board will fill out the tally sheet provided to them, ranking their top four choices as follows. Those four choices, then Michelle and Haley will take those tally sheets, compile them, and return them, and then we will see where we go from there. So, um does each person have a tally sheet? You have your your they sheets. Yeah. Huh? Yep, he's got it. I got it somewhere. Go. I'm good to go. We go through so much paper. 
I don't think I have one. Oh. It's the colored um, plastic yeah. clip. Which one? Oh, right here. Yeah, look for the green clip. Is it well, color? it's other we all, oh, okay. uh, all different yeah. colors. I know, I love it. <laughs> and, and, and while we're trying, well, what we're trying to fill this out. I want to say I've lived in the Spring Valley for 36 years next month, Friday the 13th. Liz, thank you. You got here. I just noticed. <laughs> the, the issues in the association are real. And the lake is a, is a real big issue. Spring Valley Lake's been around 54 years. It's built by Boise Cascade. As Joanne said, this was a sales office at one time. It was also the 7-Eleven convenience store. Um, I think what every candidate said is true. Um, I've sent the budget committee. I think the budget is absolutely broken in there. Uh, I don't think that there's the accountability the way that we need to. And and I think each one of you did a really good job in, in, in trying to summarize that. So with that, uh, does everybody have their scoring sheets? We sure do. Let me, I just want to confirm the first uh, public comment was from the gentleman speaking on behalf of Kevin, right? Correct. Correct. And that was, yeah. And his brother-in-law. Correct. Correct. I got it. Got it. You want to collect them, Haley? Eight, I'm sure. Okay, so yeah. Eight, when, seven, one guy gets four. You don't need to do the values. Just rank them one, two, three, four. Four is the highest. You don't need to put down the values. Your first choice. Your first Wait. choice is one. No. Your second choice is four. Wait, four. okay, yeah. So you don't want to that act because I thought it was four one. Points. Whatever Michelle says goes. First choice equals yeah, four Yeah, whatever points. Michelle says, yeah, it's right. right above it. Yeah, we got it. She keeps us all on, on the... Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you definitely know what you're doing. Okay. We just had a mis show up? miscommunication okay. between us. It happens. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I know I caught that one. I wouldn't get this quiet when I was in detention. I was in detention every day. You good? I'm good. I'm done. Hand that to Michelle. There you go. Yeah. This is very fancy, guys. Good job. Should we have a, yes, we take a I quick confirm. break then? No, I'm going to let, um, actually, we have a good idea. It's a great idea. While they are grading this or coming up, we have a special guest tonight. I think everybody from Spring Valley Lake will, will enjoy it. She is a longtime uh, public official. She worked for the city. I'm going to read a, um, a little bio about her. Have you been watching your phone? I, I left it at the car for a reason. Have you been calling me? I've been so calling you. I couldn't see you, and I'm thinking. I had a kid that would, would, would ring and go to the back of the room. Yeah. So I left it in the car for a reason. Yeah. So, <laughs> Elizabeth. She waited twice. <laughs> her, her, her nickname is Liz Becerra. She's a longtime resident of the city of Victorville with more than 34 years of experience in municipal government. Her areas of expertise are public works, traffic control, and infrastructure management and maintenance. Liz began her career with Southwest Portland Cement. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You work for Sheets? I, oh. Sheets? No. Tom Sheets? No. no. Uh, now CMEX at the age of 18. In 1985, she joined the city as a public works laborer and progressed to the rank of supervisor prior to her retirement in 2020. While working for the city of Victorville, she has actively supported community events, festivals like the annual Victorville Christmas Parade, Spice of Life Fall Festival, 
National Night Out more. She was part of the crew that designed and installed the city's 7th Street Median Beautification Project. You did a great job. Liz's love of Victorville and passion for community motivated her to run for Victorville City Council. She's honored to serve the citizens of, of Victorville following her election November of 2020. Her priorities included developing more activities and programs for local youth, like the Victorville Sports Complex, expanding library services, fostering the use of new electric vehicles amongst the city's fleet of vehicles to not to reduce emissions, but also save money. Liz was appointed by the governor of California to serve on the state fair board when she is active in planning the annual state fair in Victorville and other events and activities in, in the fairgrounds. Liz's family roots in Victorville date back to the 1920s. She grew up in Old Town, Victorville. Her first family residence was on E Street. She attended local public schools and earned, and earned her associate degree in public works from Victor Valley Fair. Community College. Liz and her family attend St. Joan Arc Catholic Church in Old Town, Victorville, where she actively volunteers her time in church-sponsored food distribution and charitable activities aimed at strengthening Old Town and supporting local families. Um, Liz, I want to say something publicly. I've never told you this. I met Liz probably two months after I incorporated our company back in 1989. She was, she drove around, she had a paint wagon for the city to take care of graffiti. And she approached me because I had a lot of science and she thought I had a lot of money. And she said to me, she goes, I need $100 and I'll put your name on the back of this. Little did you know I had $800 in my checking account. And when I came home that night, I said to Deb, I said, we're down to 700 bucks and we figured out how to get through it. But it was that 100 bucks. I'm really proud of what you've done. You're a great asset. Come on up and tell us about the city. Thank you, sir. Lord, thank you very much. Um, being an alumni of Victor Valley College, believe it or not, I never had to stand in front of you. It was shocking, but true. <laughs> that's good, I did, though. You, that's good. Um, in hearing, and, and I was hearing the Spring Valley Lake residents and yourself, it seems like that bridge has been a double-edged sword for everybody on this side and that the side. The Brian Gingler Bridge? Yes. Um, let's work together on it. Whoever gets Spring Valley Lake, let's figure out what we could do to make it better. If we need to, you know... Let's now work together. If I've seen the college and the city, we need to become one. We need to become not one with Spring Valley Lake because I don't want us over there. But we can fix what we have on the roads coming to that. Um, at the time right now, the city, we are doing great. Our wellness center downtown is going in its fourth month. We are almost at capacity. We are at about 110 residents there. I understand we still have a homeless issue. Um, you have to want to go down there. That's the main goal. You have to want to be at the wellness center to be in there. Hopefully, we don't have any of your students there. But if we do, let's get them. Let's figure out what we need to do to get them from there to here safely, and let's get them in school so they can move up and move out. Um, another thing is the city is investing in the bridge going from Vic, uh, by Victor Valley College, Fish Hatchery Road. Um, they're going to expand it and update it so it's earthquake friendly. Um, we just approved that. Apple Valley's doing their side, we're doing ours, and that's gonna cause a little bit of traffic for you guys, but leave a little earlier. <laughs> also, yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, yeah, leave a little earlier from Bear Valley Road, period. Um, our new, where the, the our new Sprouts store is doing well. Those of you who haven't been there, please stop by and see it. Um, lots of stuff that I've never even seen or heard of, but it's doing well. I don't, I'm not a health nut. <laughs> Del Taco, we're good to go. Yeah. Um, we're also getting our first raising canes in Victorville. Oh, yes, yes, see, there we go. Now that's healthy. Yes, see, there we go. So that's going to be between um, Winco and the Chevron gas station right there on Roy Rogers Drive. So they're hoping to break ground this year. And yeah, we'll see you there. So we'll be there. I'm with them. Um, our big thing that we're excited about is our library. We awarded the contract to the contractor that's going to start. It's going to be in the golf course clubhouse, what used to be the restaurant there. All that's going to be gone, and they're going to expand it by 5,000 square feet. It's going to be state of the art. We would like input of maybe what we need on both sides. Like I said, we need to work together now as one. So if you have anything, 
Um, we want to hear from you. It's a $9 million grant that we've gotten from the state of California. Uh, we're going to put it to good use. We're hoping it will be completed by October 2025, and everything should be modernized. Other than that, if any of you have questions for me, I know it's not a question-answer session, but anything. I also sit on the board for Victor Valley Transit. We can work with that, too. If we need more stops, a different stop, or that stop needs to be moved from there, let's, let's work together. Let's make everything better. Let's make so everything better Mayor, on both sides. I don't know, Dr. Walden, who at our college, we, I believe, this number may be wrong, we've identified 30 homeless students. Is that right? Uh, no, I, I don't know what the exact number is right now. We, 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 we've identified um, who are, who's in charge of them? Amber. Amber Allen. Allen, okay. Let me give you, I'm going to give you my card before I leave. It has my email on there. Um, I email me Amber's email and I will forward Amber's email to the HOPE team so there'll be no interacting. Everything that they do will be between them and the center. So they won't be stood out, you know, completely or not a lot of people will know just between the homeless team and the wellness center. And, and let's so get them there. The wellness center is incredibly impressive. It is, it's, it's the most state-of-the-art center of its kind in the United States today. And there are cities coming out here all the time well, yeah. to go through it to see what, what they've done. They've done a really good job. But let's let's help your kids, and I'll give you mine. Let's help your kids. And I'm sorry, I call them kids, guys. I'm 60 years old, so anybody under that, I call them my kids. So, anything else? Any other questions, Dennis? It's been a long time. It's been a while. It's been a while, huh? A you while. had a uniform on last time we worked yeah. together. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It's been a while. Yes. Do you have I, anything you want to tell us about her? I was no. on the. <laughs> Dennis, I was a reserve when Dennis was in uniform. Really? I was. There was a different road I was taking. It's a different world. Yes. So, wow. but as an, as an alumni, that's why I'm saying I enjoyed it here. Victor Valley College was the place for those of us kids that this is where we had to go. Well, I'll close and tell you this board will be a part of, uh, we believe will be the number one community college at 1140 in the year 2026, 2027. Wow. I know your nursing we are, program. We're we are the fastest growing one in that's California right. and number five in the country. Let's get it to number one. You got it. Let's see what we can do to help us get there. Great attitude. Okay. Thanks, Liz. But let's Appreciate work together, guys. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, guys. Like I said, I'll leave you my card and everything, and if I'll leave a couple for you guys if you need me. My cell phone number, my personal cell phone number's on there, my email's on there. Okay? That's if you check your huh? cell phone. That's bold, girl. I, that's okay. I, you can call me 24-7. You'll see how many times I texted you and that, called you. Yeah, right. right now when I get back to the car. Like 10 times. Thank you, guys. See you. And thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, so the well, just to read off like the number one, the number two. Yeah, the number yeah. one, two, three, four. Okay, so the number one um, was um, Vicki Fitch, and then number two was Tim Craig. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Number three, we had a tie between Joanne Romero and Dennis Verhagen. And number four, we had a three way tie between Carl Ebersall, Kevin Fugit. Can I can I have one? Oh, that has the results on it. No, I have. If you if you want to do a tiebreaker, we have additional tally sheets. Oh, I think they can do tiebreaker by vote by just motion. By, and second. By motion right? Can I have your this point, can I have your results though? Yes. Yeah. Um, Trustee Wood is our clerk, so I've asked him as clerk to lead us in this and to make sure that there's no job, complications because I'm a resident. Do we, do we want to do it one by one or is it a complete motion? Sorry. Well, I'll just make the motion. So I'm making a motion, Michelle, uh, that we cast all of the VVC votes for the following four candidates. Cast all of the college's available votes. Ready, 
for the following four candidates. Vicki Fitch, Tim Craig, Joanne Romero, and Dennis Verhagen. Do I have a second? Second. Any conversation? Uh, any conversation input? My only apprehension is uh, the vote for the person that didn't come tonight, that Senate representative. I just appreciate people coming in person so oh, that absolutely. we can get to know them. That's just my own personal preference, but. I don't think anybody uh, disagrees. They did a really good job. I didn't is hear he what you here? said. It's Kevin's. Did he have to leave? Yeah. No, he did a very good job. He let off very well. Yeah, that's fine. It just is helpful to somebody that doesn't live in Spring Valley Lake to get to know the people. I, like I took the time this week to read this. And yep. So it's just helpful, that's all. So in my opinion, I would prefer to vote for people that showed up here tonight. We're Mike, to, Mike all on, on, this, on the all four, four that I made a motion for. Romero did not show up. Yes, she did. Over the four yeah. again? Oh, I'm so sorry. She spoke first. My mistake. I'm so sorry. I was thinking of. There was only one. There was one other one. <coughs> I don't know what I was thinking of. Never mind. I apologize. Okay, so. Let's put the guy who didn't show up. Yeah. We have a and motion we and we have a second. second. Any other <coughs> discussion? No, I, would I say take this. mine away. Okay. Please detract and take mine away. <laughs> Take it back. Thank you. I love you. Never mind. Never mind. I'll say this because we could be here for a really long time. I don't think in all the years, yeah. I don't think in all the years that I've lived in Spring Valley Lake, at one point was very involved with concern with Spring Valley concerned property owners, or the 13 years I've sat here, that I've seen a better group of candidates come forward. Um, I think the thing I've noticed with this year's group, not that we have it in past years, uh, but I was a part of a group, and, and Dennis, you'll probably remember this, that we, we ran a slate like, like, like Tim. We ran a slate every year, but I think we were coming up with the same results after a period of time. We get the same results, call that insanity. Um, I would encourage anybody tonight that's here to stay involved. Spring Valley Lake is a jeweled high desert. It has some very serious competition coming. Silverwood is under construction. It's a multi-billion dollar project. Um, uh, Spring Valley, uh, Victor Valley Community College, we get a piece of property tax off of Spring Valley Lake. Your assessed value last time I checked was like $1.2 billion a year. Uh, we spend here right now $31,000 a year. So it is, um, I, I uh, to, to whoever talked about the lake. And, and I know the, the lake is, is something that nobody wants to talk about. I've seen the report. The report was very discouraging. And I felt that it could have been handled, I think, a little bit differently. But that, that's just my opinion. Uh, but anybody that's here that ran, I would really strongly encourage you to stay involved. We really, this is four people a night, seven people can't cure it. Um, I've seen a lot of great people with great intentions get on. And then all of a sudden, they kind of realize the, 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 the reality. So with that, Dennis, do you have anything that you want to no. say? No, I'm done. Vice President Pinkerton? I just take do you my want to voice, <laughs> voice vote or what? She's going to do it on the computer. I can, I can do it either way. Yeah. Well, if you can do it on the computer, yeah. Yeah, she's well. doing it on the computer. Well, it, 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 it is shown anyway. So the board, I think. I apologize, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Don't worry. My mistake. I'm Joanne, she is a great trustee to work with. She yeah, never it's makes questionable. Mistakes. We've no. had some great Duke outs, but I'll tell you, I love her to death. That is so sweet, Joe Brady. I would not let anybody duke it out with you. I'd, I'd, be, I'd beat them up. Oh. She's waiting on student, student advisor. advisor. Oh, student advisor. I'm sorry. I'm like asleep at the switch. It's okay. Yes, it I agree okay. with the motion in a second. Thank you. See? Mm -hmm. We're here for one reason, one reason only our students. So just let me comment 
I know it's really cold for you guys up here, but it's really hot for them back there. I know, but it's going <laughs> right on my neck. <laughs> but if we open the doors, we're going to lose the HVAC All in here completely. Is that Mr. Campbell? So, yes. The legend. <coughs> okay. Yes. So Shall we have a unanimous vote. Uh, Shall you need to so say. the 19 votes will be allocated to Vicki Fitch, Tim Craig, Joanne Romero, and Dennis Rahig. <coughs> Congratulations, all of you. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank the gentleman that spoke in behalf of Kevin. I've never met Kevin. He did call me. He was incredibly professional. He was bummed, but, you know, he said, Joe, I've got 30 years. My wife picked a trip, and we're going to go. And so thank, thank you all. See you, Liz. See you, Mayor. I got a bit dirty. Sorry. Oh, you do? Yeah, because I have a husband that will divorce me, too, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. So one, more, one more announcement about You're my the, favorite mayor. the air conditioning. Uh, you only have two more months of this room. Thank you. And Allegedly. July will be in the new building, according to John. Allegedly, John Nolan. <laughs> I will all... I just want to say this to the board. In all the years I've lived there, in the elections I've seen, I've never seen more signs from all the candidates. So people are really, they're really, Caring. they're they're really into it this year. So it, it, it's good to see, and, and we've stayed out of it. So It's just a little difficult not being in the community to make these kinds of decisions. It feels kind of weird. Well, Joanne and uh, Ms. Boyd, you, you, you maybe were not here. There was a point where you're, Legal counsel did not want our votes counted a couple of years ago because how we did it. And your general manager was was there what happened? But it doesn't matter. It's all behind us. So we we've all worked it out. So, okay. So the next item that we have is uh, board of trustee goals. That would be Brandon. God, you didn't say my name. Trustee, <laughs> just me. Wood. I know. Just me. So for those in the audience, our board of trustees actually have individual goals, and we report on them monthly. We rotate, and that's why I think we're doing so well. I, I would maybe state that in a different way. Our, our board has five goals that we all passionately care about. We just have kind of each adopted one of the goals to be the goal that we're kind of the uh, – the supporter or the liaison or the spokesperson for. adopted or assigned well, so, I, picked, I, I picked mine so this year you didn't this year we depend on a report from Michelle each month as you rotate and she read off what she's reporting on that the whole board is doing you did not pick individual goals this year but you're getting ready to do your evaluation if you want to do uh, your favorite goal next year, you can sure do that, but we didn't do that for this year. We've done it through rotating a different member every month, and based on what activities happen that month, you're just reporting on the most uh, poignant of them. So that's what you've got tonight that she wrote up for you. Right. No, I get that. I, d I just don't want it to be misconstrued that each trustee has a goal. Like, I only care about right. one goal and... Each one of us only cares about one goal. Those are our collective goals. Collective, that's sort of what you're... you like collective, Jen? Sure. Can that, will that sure. Collective. Yeah, take it away, Brandon. Tell us All the right. goals. All right. So goal three. Uh, this goal emphasizes the board's commitment to supporting the college's effort of improving student outcomes, uh, including our support of the three cohorts attending a web-based training with IEBC's Karen Campus Academy. Uh, there are six classified professionals, four faculty, and four administrators attending five sessions of training over the next seven weeks. This training will help them to foster a campus-wide culture of caring through adopted behavioral commitments that are focused on providing an outstanding experience for our students. An example of one of those commitments is the 10-foot rule this is a commitment that whenever a student is within 10 feet 
and seems like they need assistance, the VVC employee commits to approach them to see if they can assist them in any way. We probably all should do that, right? It's very nice. The board <laughs> encourages the support and continued work of VVC's Caring Campus and providing a five-star experience. The end. <laughs> 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 So we have the individual board member reports, and we're going to start with our student trustee. All right. So a lot has happened this past month. Um, BBCASB went to Washington, D.C., which I will have a presentation later for you. Um, I also attended the Gay Pool events on April 2nd and April 3rd, which went really well. And then this past weekend, BBC ASB members also went to SSCCC General Assembly. Um, and we also had biology students who went to their own conference in Santa Clara University. And today I was given a tour of the Regional Public Safety Training Center facilities today, which was really nice as well. Thank you. Trustee Anderson. My turn? Okay. Well, I didn't do a whole lot this last month. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to see more people at, the, at our meeting not just for union and stuff. I'd like to see every seat taken out here. And and we're going to get a new one where we're bigger, bigger capacity. Yes, sir. And that's coming up in what, July? That's the, that's so we're going to move. And <laughs> I, want, I want to see how many people can fill that room and keep it full for the, for the meeting. And also, I think that... Uh, we're, we're, the college is just move, perking right along. Uh, that that new facility we built down there is wonderful. It's really great, and I know a lot of work went into that. And Dr. Walden and company and John and they're all, you know, especially John, uh, are really uh, worked on it and diligently and, and did a great job and I just want to thank everybody for showing up tonight and have a, have a great uh, summer's coming so enjoy your summer when it, while it lasts it's fun summer's great used to cruise the boulevard in the summertime <laughs> way back in the when the, the gas was 20 cents a gallon Remember that? Anybody? No? 20 cents a gallon for gasoline. I started when it was 33 cents a gallon. Huh? 33 cents a gallon. 33 cents. Yeah. Hopefully. Let's hopefully. Well, your dollar's not what it used to be. But uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. Trustee Wood. Um, I have really nothing to report on. Trustee Tarpley. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm, I have no <laughs> say. Uh, I am sure that I did a lot of really excessive webinars, but I just have blanked. And so I don't have a lot to report on either. Uh, but I sure do appreciate being here and appreciate all of you being here. So thank you. Trustee Pinkerton. Yes, I do have some things. Uh, for Women's History Month, I went to the Expanding Horizons uh, Conversation with Women, and our beautiful, amazing, lovely lady back here, Elizabeth Duarte, <laughs> put it on, and I, she did a fabulous job. <laughs> um, and the presenters, uh, they told stories of where they began and where they're at now and uh, with their being CEOs and leaderships of their organization. It was very inspiring. And... Um, the other thing we went to was, John and I, uh, was to the um, Newton T. Bass Family Concert Series that was held over in the PAC Center. And the group was Jason um, Fabus Trio, 
Uh, they performed big band music, which was from the 1920s to the 1950s. And how I could tell that they were really good is John fell asleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we call it pulling a joke right <laughs> And I thought that John and I were going to be the young group there. Come to find out, we I met the old group there. We found out that we were not the old group there. We were the young group. So VVC is for everybody. <laughs> and then the other, uh, we went to the Spring Music uh, Music Week, and the, we went to go see the um, orchestra and choir performing the Requiem uh Op nine, and it was um, it was really beautiful. It was in honor of Craig uh, Pridmore. He was one of he was uh, our director of uh, uh, our concert and jazz band. Um, he passed away in uh, January, mm -hmm. so that was an honor uh, to him. And the director was uh, Dr. Karen Miskell and uh, Ing Brigham uh, Welch, and. Uh, it was very moving, very, very moving. And that is it for me. Oh, one more thing. We're going, John and I are going to go to Baker tomorrow. Uh, we were invited by uh, one of the adjunct faculty here. He's also the assistant superintendent up there in Baker. Uh, we're going to go up there. We're going to take some VVC swag so we can give it out to the high school students there. And they're going to present, uh, they're going to present us with some of their stuff there. Um, uh, some speeches that they're going to give. There's going to be um, some other county uh, figures there, so we'll be there tomorrow. And, too. Oh, oh, yeah, we're taking some stuff from Barstow, too, up there. So looking forward to that. And that's it. Trustee Pinkerton, former trustee, former board president, John, we appreciate all that you both do. You, you both do a lot. Um, <clears throat> This last month, with the help of uh, Lee Bennett um, and two of his uh, professors, Keith Shanner and Steve Coltis, and in conjunction with Dr. Todd Scott and Mackenzie Tarango and Dr. Walden, uh, the automotive group met for their accrediting uh, program. Uh, we had uh, dealers from Valley High Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Kia, I think we had uh, Victor Valley Motors there. <clears throat> we have made contact with all the dealerships now and hope to have them for a separate lunch in May to talk to the owners about the programs that we have here. But the, the lunch that, that I think uh, Mackenzie started out a little slow, and there was a lot of hiccups. We, I mean, we did everything we could. Um, it, it, it worked out well. The room was full. Um, I think VVC found out what the dealers need. I think the dealers heard from us on what we were doing. I think there was a, a great exchange, and it was really actually pretty exciting. So it was a three it was, it was a three hour program. Um, I did find out that my longtime friend Scott Dickinson, who's been the executive vice president of the Browning Auto Group, uh, they have the four dealerships up here, but 14 total in Southern California will be retiring at the end of May. So, um, and I want to thank uh, Lee Lee Bennett. His staff did a really, really, really good job. Uh, secondly, I I attended. I, I've had a lot of a lot of coffees, a lot of lunches, a lot of meetings, a lot of people from here and there, here and there. Uh, but our our good friend, uh, former trustee Pinkerton, facilitated a discussion between myself and a and a gentleman I was not expecting you to be here, and I wasn't going to talk about you anyway. And that's J James Campbell. They call him JC, um, who is president of NAACP. Uh, we had a, a great coffee about a week and a half ago and talked about. You know, what can we do together to leverage who we are here in the region and what can we do for our challenge use? So we're still kind of, as my mother used to say, I'm noodling over it, and that's what we are doing. And, and JC, I, I thank you much for a very a, a, a great conversation that was very honest, and I think it was, it was intended to be like that. And uh, Trustee John, thank you for facilitating that. So uh, just, just a great thing. So with that, we will get on to our next section, which is our b board president superintendent's report. Um, first thing is ASB goals. Hello. So I apologize in, in advance. I'm going to be taking up a little more time than normal tonight. I have three presentations, but I just believe the students have accomplished some great things this past month that need to be shared. I'd first like to invite the biology students up to give their little presentation. I believe I have three here tonight, Jeremiah, Taylor, and Julia. Would you guys like to come up? Hi, I'm Taylor. 
<laughs> um, what did we say? <laughs> Tell them about what you did, your accomplishments, and what awards you got. Okay, we were able to go present at Santa Clara University to... We did three different presentations. We were just one of the many groups uh, about bloodhound trailing with arsonists, bloodhound trailing t-shirts, and bloodhound tra trailing being able to detect scent from urine. Two of our presentations, one, the urine one and the t-shirt trailing one, and we were able to... We won Best Talk. That's what it was. Sorry, I was trying to remember. Sorry. We won Best Talk, and that was overall all the presentations. And with it, we gained a lot of experience to be able to learn how to present in front of other universities when we start going to our master programs to be able to present better. And we were also able to gain the experience and learn from other universities as well. We beat UCLA and USC. Woo <laughs> There's not a lot of people that can brag in the high desert that they uh, did that. Yeah. Of the Mojave yeah. Valley, I should say. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Ooh. Wow. We're all done. Don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy. You're next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, she basically covered everything. Um, yeah, we were against some pretty um, high class universities, and we were able to beat them out in each of our divisions. Um, we were the only ones to do research with bloodhounds in the entire competition as well. So we had pretty unique projects. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Again, to piggyback on the we beat UCLA, USC. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And again, I believe big, also Berkeley. That should UC be it. Berkeley, St. Mary's. Yep. No, not St. Mary's. No, St. Mary's. 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 Santa Clara. We had some. Ooh, the, we, the host. Yeah, we had a lot of big colleges out there, and we like to thank ASB for funding us to be able to go on a trip, as well as our professor, Dr. Lisa Harvey, for being our person that got us through all this. <laughs> what was oh. your name, sir? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Thank you. Hopefully, Mr. Sewell can get that in the L.A. Times, the Wall Street Journal, the right. New York Times, <laughs> even maybe the Daily Wall Press, the BBNG. I mean, that'd be a great. That's a great headline. BBC beats UCLA SC. <laughs> and that, that's big. It's mm -hmm. bold. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. As you know, at the end of March, BBC ASB went to Washington, D.C. again for an ASAP conference so we could advocate on a national level. Tim, can you please pull up the slides? I'd also like to invite the ASB members here who went on the trip, if you'd like to join me on up here. Uh, hi, I'm Jacob Kleinsmith. I'm the Fine Arts Senator for ASB, and I'll start with this presentation. So this is about our trip to ASAC um, on the next slide. ASAC is the American Student Association of Community Colleges. Uh, it's been active since 1984. And Robert, how many years have we been going? 25. 25. That's a lot <laughs> for some people. Um, so the point of this is to provide students with training in leadership, advocacy, and citizenship. So we attended um, a couple of workshops. Um, some about code switching, which was really interesting, given by um, Chris Molina. And there was also one on microaggressions and public speaking, which I, some, a lot of you found helpful. Mm -hmm. So, it was, uh, and then that's us in the airport at uh, three ish, in the four. four in the morning. Um, next slide. So, Robert in those discount flights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard Robert had a coupon? A coupon? Right. Business class. Might At 3 a.m. it was buy one, get 15. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you have to be on the plane that the engine's not falling off. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a picture I took from our service project. So every year that we go, uh, we try to leave the place a little better than we found it. And this year, we collaborated with the National Park Service to help maintain uh, the National Mall. So some of them went to the Washington Monument. 
uh, we decided to walk towards the Jefferson Memorial along all the cherry blossoms uh, and help pick up trash along the way. So on the next slide, you'll see us there um, with our big trash bags in front of the Jefferson Memorial. Um, next slide. So um, at, at ASAC, they have us split into different round tables and it's not just people from our college because um, they really want you to exchange ideas, come up with pros and cons for each and really think out what you're voting on and then each college gets one ballot and then we cast those ballots to determine what, our prior what order the priorities are going to be in. Uh, the priorities are submitted beforehand and we have to pick from three and it ended up with um, DACA being first, Pell Grant being second, and the Higher Education Reform Act being third. Um, Pell Grant was talking about expanding it again. Um, unlike our conference the first time, this one was talking about extending it to non-credit programs as well. And uh, Higher Education Act Reform. The higher we were asking to reauthorize the Higher Education Act reform because in the act itself, it kind of has an expiration period. We have to redo the act, and it has not been updated or redone, so we kind of just want to push it because it'll help community college students transfer into higher education and continue their careers in universities as well. And if I remember correctly, it hasn't been updated since 2013, and one of the points is that they want to... Uh, involve regulations about technology. I think that's a huge thing right now, especially considering all the problems we're seeing with AI in the school system. Um, so that was also a piece of it as well. Next slide. Uh, so here are some of our visits from uh, the Capitol. Uh, this is all of us gathered in front of Congressman Obernolte's office. Uh, we got to talk to his staff members about those said priorities. Um, I feel like a lot of it focused on Pell Grant and federal work study, even though that wasn't on the priority list, that was a priority for us. Um, so just keep going on. It's just we just kept saying the same points to different people in hopes that someone would make some change. Um, here was uh, Senator Padilla's open forum. Out of all those people in the room, VVC got to ask two questions. Uh, which was a lot for the amount of time they had. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked them about Pell Grant and their little motto uh, was yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, <laughs> they, they were just talking about how things on Capitol Hill move a little slowly. Um, and then they were talking about some of Senator Padilla's initiatives such as uh, mm -hmm. basic needs. Uh, and uh, there was another bill that they talked about we also went ahead and got emails back from Senator Padilla's office this time, and he called us out by name, as well as Jay Obernolte's office. We got emails back asking for confirmation of exactly what we were advocating for, so they had the information down to the T of what we were trying to advocate for. So it made us definitely feel a lot more heard than the first time, because we got direct feedback back. Um, and yeah. And just you should know that I, as a result of your visit, I also received letters directly to me from uh, Senator Padilla, as well as uh, Congressman Obernolte. Oh. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I can say that at all the meetings we went to, they did take a good amount of notes, so uh, that's hopeful. Uh, I think, what, what college was in the back there? That was Moreno Valley. Moreno Valley. Uh, yeah, we took a little In the picture. back, though. In the back, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many of us, I mean. Um, <laughs> so, next slide. Uh, this was us at the photo op with Senator Butler. We got to speak with her very briefly and her staff a little more in depth. Um, we also gave her a challenge point on her way, which she appreciated. What stood out to us about this one is that uh, Senator Butler actually went through the community college system, and she is very much in support of Pell Grants because she herself received Pell Grants um, and federal work study as well. Um, so, and, and she's in an interesting position because she's not running for re-election, so she doesn't really have to die on those political hills. So we're, I, well, I'm a little hopeful, hopeful um, that her office can get some stuff done um, before they're out. Uh, next slide. Here was our visit to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. 
this is an important slide and it stands out from the rest of the sites we saw because this has kind of become a tradition with VVC, is that we go and we lay a wreath at the tomb. Um, so on the next slide, um, here it is. I, I uh, Andrea, Haley Reyes, and Jorge Almendares are all got to go and be a part of the ceremony. Um, and I believe we have the video to show. Of the. All right, and we'll just move on. I kind of want to see the video. <laughs> we'll talk to Tim about that. Anyway. Um, so we ended up taking a picture afterwards, and that guy right there on the left-hand side, uh, he actually graduated from Hesperia High School. Uh, we had no way of knowing that he would be there, and it was just uh, such a coincidence that he is a tomb guard and was there the day we laid the wreath. Um, it, it's a really interesting experience going to Arlington. There's no, I don't think there's any way you can keep your spirits up when going there, unfortunately. Um, it's just such a solid and uh, solemn and sacred ground, and it was a great experience for all of us. Next slide. The sights. <laughs> uh, this 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 is a uh, statue on the top of the modern modern art uh, museum that we got to see. Um, next slide. What's the name of that statue? Uh, I think it is the. I think it's quite literally just the. Blue chicken. Um, <laughs> yes. The blue rooster. The blue rooster. Um, so <laughs> uh, here is uh, the inside of the metro station. This was right before we did our nighttime trolley tour. So we took a trolley all around the town, uh, seeing some of the memorials at night. Except Chinatown. Except China. Robert made us go to Chinatown at night. We had to pass by it. I, yes. I publicly apologize to Mama Jen for going past Chinatown. Right. <laughs> Robert, we made him promise they weren't going to Chinatown. Robert made us. We had to go walk. Oh. 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 Okay. And then we have the Vietnam Memorial. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, we also visited a bunch of memorials because, you know, this was an educational trip. Yes, it was an educational trip. Um, we also got to see the Korean War Memorial, which I didn't see last time. Um, at night, it's very, I don't know, the word, ghostly. Um, it, it's, it's a great memorial, I think. It was cool. I didn't have a picture of it because it was too dark. Um, <laughs> but uh, next slide. Here's some of the pictures. So this, the one on the left was of the cherry blossoms at night as we were walking through the FDR Memorial. Um, it had just recently been flooded, so a lot of the lights were out, but we still got to see it at night, which was cool. And then on the right-hand side was the White House, which we did the, the first day we got there, right when we get off, got off the plane, we went and saw the White House. Um, on the trolley tour, we also got to see it lit up green for St. Patrick's Day, so that was, that was interesting, too. Next slide. Here was the Iwo Jima Memorial. This one is in Virginia, so a little across the way. Um, but this was also a part of the trolley tour. Um, not, this is honoring uh, Marines um, in general, even though it's called the Iwo Jima Memorial. Uh, next slide. Oh. <laughs> oh. So um, we, we were eating dinner at the uh, ramen place. And the building two doors down caught on fire. And that is the picture, um, I believe, of the suspect. Um, I, Brandon has advised me not to comment anymore on that one. Um, Thank you. Because you're a witness, huh? <laughs> um, He's taught you well. And then on the right-hand side, we have... Um, he listens. <laughs> on the right hand side we have uh, when Jen took over the microphone on the airplane to start a friendly rivalry with Chafee who we just happened yes. to be sharing an airplane with um, also had the coupon <laughs> <laughs> they also had the coupon uh, I don't know I, I, we had a couple extra I guess or... <laughs> they were expiring soon it was, uh but it was, it was funny because they, they convinced the flight attendant in the back of the plane to make an announcement about the trip they had just gotten back on. So they uh, 
invited us to talk about our conference as well on the plane. They ignored us initially, yeah, and I had to jump over people to grab the microphone. Because I was not going to let them acknowledge Chafee without acknowledging us. Were you, right, so. were, were you on Southwest Airlines? We were on Southwest Airlines. Yeah, that's the only airline that lets you do that. Uh, this was also a Max uh, 8 plane as well, in case you were wondering. You got here in one piece. Okay. Yes, we got here in one piece. Well, of course. Jen's on the no-fly list. <laughs> yes, yes. She, but it was worth it. She was before, but now, now they, they no, care. Sure. Um, next line. Here's just some more pictures. Um, this was at the ramen, the left-hand side, that's at the ramen place um, before. Before it burned. Never mind. Um, <laughs> on the right-hand side is, uh, I, I included this one. Here, here's uh, Jacob McGuire with my, uh, the printer I ended up getting from uh, ASAC. <laughs> Uh, it was donated to me by ASAC, and there he is carrying it on the Metro <laughs> Um I haven't tried it out yet, so hopefully it works. Um, <laughs> that was just a funny, a funny moment. Uh, people didn't believe that I had a printer in there. Um, Did you bring that on the plane? <laughs> yes, I, I checked it. <laughs> you checked it in? I checked it, yeah. I, oh, I also got bullied by a kid uh, on the way to Nebraska, so that was nice. Um, <laughs> just a lot of great memories. Um, next, oh, oh, here you go. Tim comes through. Good job, guys. And then I believe there's just one more slide. <laughs> I'll add in a few more things. So while we were there in Washington, D.C., um, this is the first time it's happened for me in a long time. All the cherry blossoms were blooming. So as we were cleaning up around the memorial, you just had the cherry blossoms falling down in the morning and like 
the morning like sun just shining on all the memorials and it was probably one of the prettiest things I've ever seen. So I was very happy to go there at a time where it was warm enough for the cherry blossoms to bloom and the weather was really nice. On top of that, um, VVC was one of two colleges to present at the conference. We had our own workshop and we were packed in the workshop. Myself and Jacob McGuire were the presenters and we talked about working with our administration and building connections across campus and helping other students guide themselves to advocacy, not only at that that conference, but also at their schools, because advocacy never stops unless you stop yourself. Um, so we were just trying to help them, make sure they get along, and we actually had a lot of great feedback after. We had a bunch of students come and talk to us after asking us questions. We talked about our retreat. We did a couple of team building exercises there, and overall it went really well. So I'm very proud to say that we were one of two colleges that presented with a full house. Thank you. Would any of the other ASB members like to give a little elevator pitch about the conference? Real quick. Go for it. So, ASAC was a life changing experience. Um, I, I was actually one of the, so this is what I wanted to do on the mic just to say something about something I did. I wanted to be a little bit selfish. But, um, I, I actually got to practice my public speaking in the Capitol. I was able to um, ask one of the questions that BBC asked. Um, I was shaking and sweating, and I did cry a little bit after. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, where else do you get that, that opportunity? Um, so I'm just so grateful to be in ASB and to have been able to go on that trip and just to be able to network and meet so many wonderful people and like, get work done, like actual work in the Capitol of the United States. So. Just an amazing opportunity, and thank you to everyone in here. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We're all supporting Victorville together and the college. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. And shout out to Angela and Andrew for driving us to the airport and back here safely. Um, that is it for Washington, D.C. I know I'm taking up a little more time, but I have one more presentation. This, these are our major accomplishments that we've had this past month. Um, can you please pull up our SSCCC General Assembly presentation? <coughs> so this past weekend, um, eight students went to SSCCC General Assembly with our advisor, um, Robert Sewell, and our mentor, Tim Isbell. Um, there how it started is we turned in, I mentioned this at the last board meeting, three resolutions that the students had done and all three were accepted by SSCCC, two going in consent agenda and one up for debate. Um, next slide, please. So this was our team. Um, we had the eight students there from BBC ASB, but we also ended up adopting three students from other <laughs> colleges as well. Uh, we adopted Liz Heaton from Butte College, um, Francesca Clara? for. Francesca from Folsom <laughs> Lake College, and then we had McGuire from Golden West College. Um, you can see McGuire kind of up there by Robert, right next to Robert on his right-hand side. That is her. Liz is not in this picture, and I don't think we got Francesca in this slide, but this is our new VVC family. We adopted other colleges. <laughs> next slide, please. So here were the three resolutions that VVC had submitted. Recognition of esports at the collegiate level by California Community College Athletic Association. And the second one is the expansion of CalFresh EBT to campus state operation, operated food services. And the third one is clarify the ranking system used for state funding of student housing on California community colleges. And each one of you guys up there on the board have a copy of our resolutions too if you wish to look at them. Next slide, please. I won't read it all, but this is our whereas part of the resolution. Essentially what we're talking about is we're stating how the, um, where is it, the elementary and the high school and middle school levels athletics association has already recognized esports as a program of their athletics association. So they're already getting funding for their program. It's already in system. As you, If you're familiar with a few of the high schools around here, they already have the program in place at their high schools, going to competitions, transferring to universities on these scholarships because it's considered an athletics program now. So they can transfer with it, uh, with these scholarships. But also universities as, such as the University of Irvine, 
offer scholarships for players for esports teams when they transfer there. So it's a big thing because the community colleges of California have yet to recognize esports, meaning a lot of our students at community colleges are losing a bunch of transfer opportunities, especially when it comes to athletics. Um, this resolution was pulled off a consent agenda. So last minute, we ended up having to debate it. And it was probably one of the most terrifying things I've done in my life because there were over 700 attendees in this conference. Um, so that's the biggest public speaking I've ever done. Um, but also something else to note, back in 2017, um, the Olympics Committee had already recognized esports as well as a sport that could be played and competed. It was at the level of any other athletic sports. So California Community Colleges Athletics Association is really the only association that's behind in recognizing esports. Um, next slide, please. So basically what we're asking for is that the Student Senate for California Community College advocates to the California Community College Athletics Association to recognize esports as well. So that way our students can have these transfer pathways when they go to universities because it's such a loss for our students to not have these programs available to them or these transfer, um, these transfer pathways for our students to go off of in athletics. Um, so I'll go a little bit into the um, debate. This somehow arguably ended up being the most controversial controversial resolution at the conference. And I mean, wow. it got really heated there. We got a lot of negative feedback and Klein Smith and I, who are both up there, we were fighting for our <laughs> lives. I mean, I've never had to argue that hard for something um, and try to convince people to vote yes. You had people on the con side who were completely against video games in general. Um, and they just didn't see a reason like why vid video games should just be a part of the education system um, and not recognizing that these are regulated video games. So it has to be recognized by the districts. It can't just be anything. You have, they have to be video games that are multiplayer, build a sense of community, and also can be competed while like any other sport can. So there are some strict regulations around it. And then you had people on the pro side talking about how this would become an athletics program that disabled people who can't participate in physical sports would be able to participate in and give disabled people who are not physically able to do sports an opportunity to gain scholarships. And this went on back and forth. I think after that student who talked about the disabilities, the guy who came after her um, started talking about the cons and basically said, you know, that's a great story you have, but get a life. So when I mean it got heated, I mean it got really wow. heated. It was such a controversial topic at this. And we had a lot of topics that were discussed with over 60 resolutions submitted. I mean, this was definitely um, a very controversial topic. But in the end, we did manage to win with 35 votes in the yay and 18 votes in the nay. So our resolution was passed, and it will now be going to state level advocacy, where it is up to the Student Senate for California Community Colleges to push this through. So we are now at state level recognition. And you can see um, that's the pro lineup. There was a lot more students. Unfortunately, I couldn't capture it in the picture. Don't blame me. I was up there, so my advisor was the one who was supposed to be doing the photos. Um, <laughs> I would talk to him about it. Um, Too but many yes. drinks again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that you can see Klein Smith and I up there in front of the entire conference, like looking at each other. We are so tired because it's the last day, <laughs> fighting for our lives as you have people just completely disregarding it and not taking it seriously at all. Um, but yes, we came back with that win. Next one, please. Um, so our next resolution was the expansion of CalFresh and EBT cards. So essentially what we're asking for is that students who are already eligible for their CalFresh and EBT cards to be used on hot foods um, to have an accessible place on campus where they can buy food here. Because at the moment, a lot of community colleges don't have that accessible for students. So students will have to find the time to leave the campus, go to somewhere that has an accessible place where they can buy food with their EBT cards, and then come back. And for a lot of those students, it just isn't, it's another burden on them. They have to leave, that's gas money on them that they're watching, they're watching every penny already, they're worried about their food. Um, sometimes they can't even get hot food. So. Um, Oh, so what we're asking for is essentially that all California community colleges have at least one accessible place for students to use this, uh, their EBT cards to buy food. And I believe CAAB 2033 is a current bill that is in committee right now. And if it passes, 
if it passes, it'll go into effect on September 1st, 2025, and it would mandate that all California Community College have at least one vendor on campus, whether it's a grocery store or someplace for students to get food. Um, it would mandate that they be required to accept CalFresh or EBT because it's so important that our students have our basic needs on campus in order to focus on their education. Next slide. Can't, uh, okay, pause. Can't we just do that? Yes, but a lot of colleges refuse to do it. Why are we not doing it? That is. I mean, you can use an EBT card at a liquor store. Mm -hmm. Correct. Why are we not doing that? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look into it. We can I know look into you, it. You need a special um, system to accept the EBT. So. And a lot of um, California community just colleges just don't want to spend the money on a new system for it. I think it's just Let me the, interject. I think it's just I, the point of sale thing. It runs just like a credit card. And, and liquor stores and fast food places and, I mean, you see the, like, we accept EBT at, at yes. gas stations. Yes. You can go in and get a candy bar at Chevron on an EBT. For, and unfortunately, not all California just, just, just for have it. purposes of time, because like, we have yes. somebody that needs to get out of state to yes. a conference. Um, I've, I just talked to Dr. Walton. We're going to agendize and take a look. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. I mean, well, this is, an this is an operational issue. So... Uh, I hear the board. Uh, we will take this up and right. look into it and report back to the board. If there's some reason we can't do it, we'll find out why and let the board know that. If there's some, if we can do it, we will do it. Thank you. So, Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. You're good. That just seemed too simple to let that just sail yes. on by without. Um, there are a lot, the majority of California community colleges don't have it. And it's really important to students that they have it. But this is the resolved, just asking for that fix. Um, next slide, please. This passed 50 to 2. 50 in the yay and 2 in the nay. Okay. And um, as you can see here. You voted no. Let's go find them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, no comment. I have no comments for it. Okay. But this also passed. So this is now a resolution that is at state level recognition as well. Next slide, please. And finally, a personal project of mine after sitting on the board and having a meeting on it here is the state funding for student housing. Um, so as you know, there is a system that colleges have to go through in order to apply for state funding, and it has three ranking systems. Once you finish the ranking systems, you are no longer eligible for state funding of it. However, we're finding inconsistencies within not only the ranking systems used to do it, but also with the state releasing money and telling us how many colleges are going to earn this um, state funding for it. And it's a significant issue because student housing isn't something you can just wait on. It's not something that you can just pass by easily. Oh, well, we have this much extra money. We'll just find out how much leftover we have and then give it to you. No, we have students whose lives depend on this. And what we're asking for essentially, if you could go to the resolution slide, it's a long whereas. Next one, please. We're asking for essentially transparency between the state, our elected officials, and community colleges. We're not asking for more funding, we're just asking for transparency. We're asking them to release this information before the ranking system goes out. So that way California community colleges can prepare in advance if they know they are not eligible for this state funding anymore. Um, because at the moment, I believe we've already submitted our rank Rank three, I think it's called, and we haven't heard back as to how much California is going to send out for funding or how many of the ranked colleges will receive that funding, unless anything has changed in the last month. No, that's true. That is true. So that's essentially what we're asking for. And this, next slide please, passed with unanimous affirmation. Um, and yeah, so all three of our resolutions came back, passed, and now recognized at state level. Um, and next slide. Now for the fun complimentary photos. Um, on the far <laughs> right, Robert really wanted his scribbles on this. So I told him I would allow for his notes to be on this. So I dedicated that one little picture for him. Um, on the left, that's us having dinner at the mission. Mm -hmm. Uh, the kitchen, at, kitchen the mission. at the mission. It was a little detour we did on the way back. And in the middle, that's us taking a picture with Dr. Julie Adams, um, who works with SSCCC. Next slide, please. Um, so SSCCC had a little fun dance for us at the end of the night where we got into their photo booth. And these are pictures from the photo booth that we had. We had a lot of fun. Um, we worked really hard, but we also did try and make the most of every minute of it. Next slide, please. 
On the, <laughs> these are my delegate ribbons. I went as the ASB president, the student trustee, and the SSCCC delegate for our region, or I'm sorry, our college. Um, it was a lot to manage. I was really busy the whole time. They um, Essentially what that means is while I was working the whole time, they could get up, do whatever they wanted, and you know grab snacks, get water, <laughs> while I'm sitting here on my laptop trying to pay attention and work the whole time. Confirmation. We did make sure Denver was taking care of the entire time. Good wow, job. She was busy. Good. I could I couldn't leave to use the restroom, though, which sucks. The restroom. Scheme. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then on Robert's stickers, as you can see, he has advisor, slacker, party animal, you think, and early adopter <laughs> on his little <laughs> name tag. Um, and that's just, just some fun we had. Next slide, please. And this is our road trip back. Um, we have been working really hard this past month. All these updates are just from the last month alone. Um, we really had had no time to rest. I think I got back and I went straight. We got back Monday morning at like 1 a.m. And um, we, 12.30. And then we went straight back into this week to working and making these presentations and continuing with advocacy because there really is no rest in advocacy. Thank you so much. Before you sit down. Um, so you've got three things here that you really cared about. First of all, um, the uh, eSports. We have a beautiful room here. We spent a quarter of a million dollars making that eSports room what it is. And the cabinet just approved. Uh, we, had, we had a sponsor before, and that didn't work out. Uh, I think it was due to health issues or other things. But uh, cabinet just approved, uh, not this last Monday, but the week before, to actually hire a coach to uh, get our esports program going and to utilize that that room to its fullest potential. So I know when we first opened it, we had like 200 students interested in that. Ironically, a lot of them were out of the STEM, or maybe not so ironically. Uh, kind of interesting because some of the ones that play football weren't interested in the esports. But those that don't play football like the esports idea. So, uh, so that is an investment we're making. Also, you should know that we recently um, signed on to a program that will. So right now, in order to get Cal Fresh, you have to be uh, you have to be working. We just signed on to a program that's a government program that will qualify students uh, to waive the working requirement and they would qualify for CalFresh. So that's coming, and uh, Amber Allen is already working on that, and we're excited about that. That's gonna be a good thing for the college. Uh, we'll go into more details on that at some other meeting. And then you already know that we, um, we I've asked about this CBT thing before. I don't remember what the answer was, but we have agendized it. I just sent it to Michelle for this Monday's cabinet to see what has to happen here to make that happen. Um, and then um, in regard to the student housing, you already know I'm in the fight on that. Yes. So I, I'm statewide fighting for VVC on this, and so we're going to do what we can. But I want all three of your issues, I want you to know your college is behind you, and thank you for your support. It helps, it helps us do what we need to do. And so thank you. very proud of you. Thank you. We came back with 100% success. All right. So Your group brings a whole lot of energy this year. I'll just report that one of our graduates um, from, the, from Asperia, who you saw back there, his name's Isaiah Jazzo Champagne, uh, graduated from Asperia High School, is one of the honor guards of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So. And real quick, I just wanted to let them have an opportunity, like one sentence. I know I'm already taking up a lot of your time just an elevator pitch if they choose to. Um, real quickly, for those of you who have seen Office Space, um, <laughs> Robert and Jen had tons of flair. Um, during eSports, uh, we were accused of being puppets of the Saudi Arabian government and big tech. That was an interesting topic. Um, and I was the one of the only ones that stayed awake in the van on the ride home. That's one, she said, he said you guys one have like two minutes to like finish this up because we need to move. Would you like to say something as a newcomer? I will. I will say something. Um, personally, I want to give praise to Advisor Sewell and Mentor Isbo for the trip that they had. They were very professional, very organized, and and they always, um, as a new newcomer in ASB, they've always um, 
treating me like family. And to me, that's a very big thing of what they've done. And also, these behind me treating me like, treating me like family. And they're also very great role models and people who I look up to in ASB. I want to furthermore um, advocate and help at the school as much as I can. And um, they also helped me introduce you to um, the board of trustees over here. And I just want to say thank you guys for everything you guys have done for me. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, John, we have a quick facilities update. So the current uh, completion is scheduled for the event center and stadium is June 25th. Ooh. Um, this week, hopefully, we're going to start paving and finish the paving, paving uh, on fish hatchery before the students and the faculty get back on Monday. Really busy down there, and we're getting some work done. You can tell. You can really tell. Congrats. Kirsten, are you ready for the foundation? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I have a presentation for you. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we tested it earlier. It worked. All right, here we go. You can jump right to the next slide. As promised um, last month, I could not announce all the honorees for our Hall of Fame gala, but now I can. Yay. So we have Carlos Sarmiento, owner of CARS for Distinguished Service to Community. Our young alumni is Chantelle Picon. She um, transferred out of here in 2019 and is new teacher out at um, Riverside in Oregon, Riverside, Riverside Prep. Prep. Correct, mm -hmm. okay. And Distinguished Service to Education is Jan Gonzalez, former superintendent of Victor L. Our alumni was Martha Mendez, our very own Martha Mendez, and our President's Award, Mark Crefield. And I wanted to share a little video of Jan's um, surprise with you. <laughs> Chris. Exciting. It's time to go and announce our winner <laughs> and honoree for their distinguished service in education to our community. Let's find out who it's going to be. I'm just completely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <crying. laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. No, you know, I, I, Victor Valley College did so much for me, allowed me to go to college while I was raising my kids, so, I, you know, I love that place, so thank so you. So do we. Yeah. 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 Thank you to this tremendous club for your nomination and support of Jane. Oh, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Now you know why they called you back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you. Congratulations, yeah. man. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you. 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 So that was the Qantas Club that nominated um, Jan, and that's where they meet at a little bit of Country Cafe She's on Spray Road. She's, She's fabulous. She's a very inspirational. Yeah, and um, her husband has been in the worked in the school district too, so it's been great. Uh, and then the next slide, please. We're exciting. It's time to go. Uh, and that's, of course, our event. Reminder, across the universe, um, we are transforming the Hilton Garden Inn. You're not going to recognize it. It's going to be galaxies, Milky Way, planets. It's going to be amazing. Um, so just a reminder, please, uh, to attend. And then I had one more slide after that. Just a thank you, and I will report, be reporting out on campus grants next month on our winners. Okay. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you so much. So, um, in the interest of time, uh, since we've had lots of presentations tonight, the next two items, uh, Michelle, I'd like to table for next month presentation on Pathway MOU with Cal Poly and the Baccalaureate Respiratory Therapy Program. All right, and that concludes the President's report. Section 10, uh, Academic Senate. Nobody here? AFT part-time faculty? United, ASB. All right, real quick. Thrivopoly is April 19th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the SAC. Um, ASB Spring Talent Show will be April 26th in the Black Box Theater. And the Multicultural Center has been holding workshops on leadership, and this aligns with Goal 6 of ASB. Thank you. CSA.
Good evening. First, I want to say I think this is probably one of the best, if not most active, ASB councils <laughs> that has been here since I've worked here. You guys do amazing work, and I just wanted to recognize that. Um, between February and March, the district hired approximately 11 classified professionals in various departments. In addition, the reorganization for administrative services that you'll be voting on later tonight will also add about 12 additional classified professionals, as well as making several employees who have been working out of class whole. We appreciate the work that went into making all of this happen. Currently, the CSEA Events Committee is working hard on putting together the events for our Classified School Employees Week next month. As always, we are happy to take any donations in the form of cash or gift cards. I was informed today our first gift card donor will be Dr. Walden, who is donating 24 $25 gift cards. We really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I also want to thank the foundation, who will be providing us with a coffee truck donation again this year. And anyone else that wishes to donate can come and see me in Building 55. Thank you. Thank you. CTA? Not here. Nope. Management? Kelly K. Howe. Oh, Kelly she's got K. some. You got a problem with bringing a group with it? I am. So I'm Kelly K. Howe. I'm the Dean of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, and I wanted to take my three minutes tonight to introduce to you the newest participatory governance committee on campus, which I did not plan this, but it actually perfectly aligns with the board goal that Brandon or that Trustee Wood discussed tonight. Um, it is the Caring Campus Committee. So it is officially now a committee. Um, the charge and mission is to develop and foster a caring campus approach to help administrators, managers, faculty, classified professionals, and students to develop a culture of connectedness and belonging. Um, on the committee are just that. There's managers, faculty, both part-time and full-time, classified staff, and then as we also have student representatives, and I am fortunate enough to um, be the management representative. So I'm very excited about it. But I also wanted to give credit where credit is due because I really had nothing to do with creating this committee or getting it approved. So I wanted to pass it over to the two co-chairs, which is Jan Espinosa and Pablo Saldana. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, it's just an honor for, for uh, the support that we've gotten from uh, Dr. Walden and everybody that's been involved. Our classified professionals have been super open and receptive as well. Uh, this class, this um, Caring Campus Committee really is here to continue to cultivate this sense of belonging and, and togetherness and, and really be able to just feel more uh, rooted into our institution. Um, Jana Spinoza has been an incredible asset to this committee and really I'm just so lucky that I get to work with her on this. And again, thank you so much for everybody that's been receptive to, to this committee. <coughs> Hi, I'm Jan. Um, I've been on this journey with Caring Campus for about four and a half years. We actually developed our commitments back in 2019, kind of finalized them, COVID hit, it kind of went dormant. We kind of didn't do anything with it. Um, Dr. Walden invited me and a couple other classified to attend a leadership academy. Um, and it really challenged us to come back with some ideas. We kind of were fired up. And so spring of 23 started the journey. We developed an operating agreement in fall of 23, and our committee started in spring of 24. So this is a great journey. We have a lot of support, a lot of people that are interested. Um, we're really excited to see what we can do for our campus, for each other, for our students. Um, to advocate, to network, to really define some of the barriers that we have personally as employees. And it doesn't matter what constituent group that we're speaking to. Um, we have some things that we can do better to better serve each other as well as our students. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is consent agenda. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered by the board trustees to be routine and have been approved by the president and superintendent of board policy 2430. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the board votes on them, unless a board member requests a specific item to be removed from the consent agenda for discussion and separate vote. Public comment and consent 
Items from anyone completing a card will be heard prior to the board's vote on the consent agenda. The complete written agenda to address the board shall be submitted before the beginning of the open session portion of the meeting. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on any of the consent agenda items. Public comments are limited to three minutes per individual, total of 15 minutes per topic. Speakers will be timed electronically and all speakers will be called to the podium to speak at the appropriate time to address the board. Only those that have been recognized by the board president will be permitted to speak under board <coughs> policy. 2350. I need a motion for the consent agenda. Motion. Oops. Second. I have, a, I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley and a second no. by Trustee Wood. Any discussion? No discussion. Student trustee? Yes. Didn't forget. <laughs> she didn't you. have to tell me. I was, I was waiting. <laughs> Jennifer, I was waiting for that. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's like a nod, you know? Uh, it wipes out three pages really quickly. Oh, no. I'm not awake, apparently. You get the vote in? Sorry. My oh, bad. That was screwed? me. It was me. You screwed up? Yep. Okay. Just one note it. Sure did. Okay. Note it down. It's on the record forever. <coughs> I think I shall survive. Okay, cool. <laughs> Action items. The complete written request to address the board shall be submitted at the beginning of the open session portion of the meeting. Individuals who want to comment on the action items may do so after being recognized by the board president. And before board discussion of a particular item during the meeting, comments are limited to three minutes per individual and a total of 15 minutes per topic. Speakers will be signed electronically, and all speakers will be called upon at the appropriate time to speak. Only those that have been recognized by the board president will be permitted to speak under board policy 2350. Do we have anybody that has signed up? No. 13.1 uh, 13, uh, 13 separate approval of the items. We've already done that. 13.2 board self evaluation process. Make a motion that we uh, utilize the services. <coughs> Second. For the motion was for PPL. For PPL. <laughs> That's how our students should be talking after all this. this <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Tired. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Michelle. My apologies. Uh, Making a motion that we utilize the services of PPL. We have a motion by Trustee Second. Wood. A second, second by there. Trustee Tarpley. Student Trustee. Yes. Time to vote. So proud. I'm sorry. Motion was by whom? Wood. Trustee Wood, second by Trustee Tarpley. Thank you. Yeah. Time to vote. Maybe. <laughs> Item 15.1, change order six and seven, an increase to Bernard Brothers, Inc. Dr. Motion. Walden. Oh, did you hear motion, that? Motion, motion is second. I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. I have a, tr a motion by Trustee Henderson, a second by Trustee Pinkerton. John, could you come up and... I got a notice from somebody... I guess listening online, they couldn't hear you a while ago when you were Can sitting. You hear me? They want you in the mic. Okay. <laughs> Change order six. Some changes to uh, the boardroom, 63,000. Um, we added some card readers and door hardware. The original design only had the exterior entrances on the card reader system and our goal, long-term goal here is to move to totally automated uh, access system across campus. So we added the interior doors so we know who's going in and out of that facility. That was $111,000. We uh, had the contractor procure some kitchen equipment that was owner furnished that we had to we could have went out and bought ourselves, but it was not really economically feasible to do that, including equipment for the concession stand, a lot of catering, uh, warming carts, stuff like that. So that that was 118000 And then the architect left out communication boxes at the end of each, each end of the football field, and that was about $30,000. So that's change order six. Change order seven, 
We changed the finish in the exterior restrooms on the floors. There was a, an epoxy coating that was originally designed. We got a credit for that. We want to go with polished concrete because of all the exterior traffic. It's easier for our custodial crew to keep clean. So some of the crafts had written on the floor some of their uh, dimensions <laughs> in permanent ink. So we had to pay to grind that down. That cost $1,500. Uh, there was some sprinklers that uh, had to be rerouted, $8,700. Some trim around the concession service window, that was 2200 And then if you've been around the baseball field, where the backstop sat, when we pulled the fabric off the, uh, the backstops, the real high backstops behind home plate, the uh, current posts were just uh, unsafe. So we had to pull those out and replace them with really a... DSA approved, very large found. I think they got a 10 foot cage of uh, reinforced steel and concrete. Footings? Pretty large, yeah, very large footings. Uh, and that, that cost, cost uh, $93,000. But we've taken the approach that we're touching that baseball field and the, the whole project is we're going to do it right. There's a right way to do it, and that's. That's what we've done. So that was pretty, that was kind of a shocking expense, but you know, it's going to be a very nice field and it's going to last a long time. Um, we had to, uh, there's a couple of sprinkler, sprinkler heads that are exterior and the architect didn't know that it got cold up here. So he had basically wet sprinkler heads outside and then they would freeze and break and then we'd have a problem. So we had to change it to some dry, they're called dry pendants. They're actually, there's no water out exposed to the exterior. So that cost uh, $2,800. Um, then we're patching and trimming about around some door frames. There's some really high, high uh, lead time door frames so we can get the project moved, accelerated while we're waiting for the door frame. So we're gonna do some trim around so we could fin do some of the other finishes while we're waiting for the door frames. Um, that, that was 5300 And then, uh, of course, our, the lecterns that were spec'd were not ADA compliant. So we changed the lecterns to match the lecterns that we used in the last project in building 50 and 52, and that cost $10,647. So that's what we're doing so far. And I, change orders are almost $2 million, and probably close to half of that is owner requested on work on the baseball field that wasn't in the scope of the work so and the other stuff that isn't that other million is that back charge which one's that well, any no, a lot of it was was changes we requested so we, we're actually um, going through a few more changes right now we're, there's on the on the north side of the event center was a, all pavers and they weren't vehicle rated pavers. Right. I brought that up before. So we're going to put in a concrete area through the gate into the, towards the football field so that we could accommodate. We're going to put concrete in in lieu of the, the uh, pavers so we can accommodate like food trucks can drive into the backside of the event center and we could you know, if somebody wants to rent the facility, there's a place they can park two field, two uh, food trucks, because if somebody drives over those pavers, they'll we'll be replacing a lot of pavers. So there's just a few things that it, we've had to make changes on. Okay, I, I got the next three items, so I'm staying up here. Okay, great. Well, I, don't, so, I don't think that the next okay. three are okay. going to require that. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Student trustee? Yes. Hmm. My... <laughs> How'd that happen? I don't know. Did you hear my vote? 
you get my vote? She got a. He saw my screen light up with it. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, 15.2 water purchase with James A. and Sola B. Revocable Thompson Living Trust. Motion. Second. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley and a second by Trustee Pinkerton. So basically, this is our annual water bill. It's been about this much every year. How much is it? $115,000. No. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Student trustee? Yes. go through okay 15.3 temporary borrowing between funds for fiscal year 2024 2025 <laughs> no motion motion second we do this every year by, uh, trustee tarpley second by trustee henderson dr walden it's standard every year student trustee yes peter boss from paul and paul pays peter back what that amounts to. Fifteen point four revised non resident student tuition fee. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarbley, a second by Trustee Henderson. So we know you just approved this. The state rejected it. They said that we weren't charging enough. You can't charge less than it costs you to have them. So we were trying to be competitive. And so the chancellor's office rejected it. So this is correcting it to satisfy the chancellor's office and the regulation, which we didn't know existed. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point one non classified short term employees. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Henderson. Doctor Walden. You get these every month. Mm -hmm. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point two memorandum of understanding classified placement correction for Elliot Williams. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. A motion by Trustee Tarpley and a second by Trustee Henderson. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point three academic equivalency for Jenny Short. Do motion. I have a motion? motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley and second by Trustee Pinkerton. Any discussion? Student trustee. Yes. Oh, I voted. I thought. Sixteen point four AFT part time faculty collective bargaining agreement twenty to twenty two twenty twenty five. Do I have a motion? Motion. I'll second. Do I have a second? I have a motion by Trustee Henderson, and a second by Trustee Tarpley. <laughs> Any discussion? Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point five increased AFT part time faculty salary schedule. Do I have a motion? 
Motion. Second. A motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Henderson. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point six increase to classified salary schedule. Motion. Second. Uh, uh, motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Pinkerton. Student trustee. Yes. Sixteen point seven increase to administrative management confidential salary schedule. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion by Trustee Tarpley and a second by Trustee Pinkerton. Student trustee? Yeah. <laughs> I guess Robert can get an increase in pay. <laughs> no, this one excludes Robert. This one? Yeah. Uh, Robert gets a decrease of fourteen yeah. percent. Perfect. That's <laughs> oh, exactly what We're I was thinking. Taking for. you to Chinatown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All on camera. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, increase to executive administrators, cabinet level, salary schedule. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley, second by Trustee Henderson. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point nine renewal of administrator contracts. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley and second by Trustee Pinkerton. Student trustee? Yes. Sixteen point one zero reorganization of the administrative services division. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have John, a do you want to um, a address by this? Trustee Tarpley and a and a second by Trustee Wood. And then John, would you like the to big the big picture? Yeah. You have to go into the details. Just the big picture of why we did this, and this was a I long. I think what he's saying is a thirty second. Long, long time coming, and it was a lot of work. Uh, yeah. So we appreciate it. So the short version is uh, there was a couple areas of the college that typically the auxiliary services and ASB and the bookstore that were running basically their accounting through the local bank and not in our county system. So that was when I first got here, that was one of the things I noticed and over the years, one of the things that I want to make change is bring back all the finances through the county system, open and apparent and running through all of our policies and procedures. There's really nothing that they were audited, but it just wasn't appropriate to have that, those operations outside of the, the normal county operation. So um, the director of auxiliary services in the meantime had resigned so that gave me an opportunity to really, they had accounting people over there, I'm moving them to the fiscal services department. Um, Dr. Walden's desire to have the outside uh, rentals of facilities moved to the foundation. So it basically dissolved the auxiliary services department, moving the, the staff that was left there to, to other assignments. Two of the staff members go to fiscal services one staff member will go to a vacant, basically a vacant uh, position in the police department. We're going to move the chief and the police leadership and the administrative staff into the accounting office. If you're familiar where the accounting office was in the SAC, Building 44, where really our desire is to have the police leadership more visible to the students. So they're going to be going in and out of the SAC, and the students are occupying the, the Student Activity Center. 
So I think we're going to get a lot more visibility and hopefully let the students remind the students that they're there and if they have any ill things in their mind, they'll know that the police are, are right there. Um, but it, it took a long time to get it all done and we waited for, the, I basically waited for that classification study to be done so we could finalize it and I pretty much have I put the resources where we think we need them. I worked with all my managers. We used to have a maintenance mechanic and we used to have a locksmith, which really weren't uh, full-time jobs, so we've eliminated those. We've increased our groundskeepers and our maintenance mechanics. So we're really just taking the opportunity to put the resources to work in all the divisions. The payroll department went from four FTE full-time employees to seven. We've had some, some change in the HR department, so some of those duties are going to go to payroll. So we've got a, a, a management level position in payroll now that will take on some of the benefits duties and then assist our payroll manager in oversight of the payroll department. Same thing in fiscal. We had, when I first got here, we had a senior accounting person that spent all of her time on grants and really managed the grants overmanaged them so we we pushed out the management to the grant people we should be managing their budgets and so we're hiring a supervisor an accounting supervisor in the fiscal services department to help the, the director manage that group and their ftes are up also so we're just we're bringing the two account positions down from auxiliary and put them in fiscal so we've got more people in fiscal now we've got so we're I put in another su a supervisor in there so I think in the future as these uh, positions get filled I think the college will be in a better place as far as accountability and audit control of the internal controls and so I think I've, I've kind of worked closely with Dr. Walden to get the, the administrative services division set up to hopefully for the future Thanks. Wasn't me. I know. <laughs> I know. You know everything. Seventeen point one grant agreement, Mesa. I have a motion. Motion. Second. Motion by Trustee Tarbley, and second by Trustee Wood. Student trustee. Yes. Seventeen point two agreement amendment number one with Mesa. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Henderson. Student trustee? Yes. Seventeen point three resolution number twenty four oh six approval of resolution authorizing payment to Velocity Truck Centers for the purchase of a new twenty twenty four Western Star fifty seven X. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Henderson. Student trustee? Yes. When's that supposed to be delivered? We have it, right? Where's that? Be out there in front. Go cool, get it wrapped. Get it wrapped. Cool. Got cruise control CD. Really? <laughs> Leather chairs? No. no. <laughs> 
We're not looking at Carsley. They're expensive. Okay, 17.4. Contract Ed with San Bernardino County Probation Department. So motion. motion. Second. A motion by Trustee Tarpley and a second by Trustee Wood. Student Trustee? Yes. Speedball. <laughs> right. Seventeen point five curriculum curriculum changes. Motion. Uh, second. 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 Uh, trustee uh, Tarpley, the motion and a second by Trustee Pinkerton, student trustee. Yes. Seventeen point six memorandum of understanding CCAP partnership agreement renewal July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2024. All CCAP locations. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Tarpley, a second by Trustee Henderson. Dr. Walt. Uh, this renews our uh, high school um, partnership for dual enrollment with nine of our local school districts. It has to be renewed annually by law. Student trustee? Yes. You want to do a verbal? All your votes are in there. It's just not, I'm just going to move on. It's going to go in so fast. Great. Nine, can, can I go to 19.1? It's informational. It's informational. That's just not really. It's not so for an informational, it's Sunshine Open Successor Collective Bargaining Agreement between the district and CSEA Chapter 584. <clears throat> Adjournment. Motion. Second. <laughs> I got to read it. I got to read it. You don't have to read it. Yeah, you do. It is the intention of Victor Valley Community College District to comply with the American with Disabilities Act in all respects. A person with a disability may request that the agenda may be made available in the appropriate alternative format. A request for a disability related modification or accommodation may be made by a person with a disability who requires a modification or accommodation order to participate in the public meeting to Monica Martinez, Victor Valley College That's at 18422 Bear Valley Road. Victorville 92395 5849 Extension 2455 from 8 30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. At least 48 hours prior to the meeting to make reasonable arrangements according to Government Code Section 54954.2. Do I have a motion to conclude? Do I have a second? Good. We're done. Uh, Wood and Anderson. 